Hey, good morning and welcome to episode 72 of Talking to Artists. Talking to Artists is a casual conversation that I have where artists can talk about their inspiration, dreams, their lives, and really what goes on behind the scenes of a, uh, of a working artist. So uh, I always find that quite fascinating. Uh, I'm Kate Taylor, your host, and also I'm a Canadian abstract uh, painter who has been super busy in the last month. So I want to thank you, thank everybody who's actually come out to uh, kind of support us. Um, I am at my cottage studio back again, and it is freezing. It's 12 degrees in my studio, so as you can see, I've got my coat on, and I cannot believe how fast it turned from being really hot to being fall. So anyway, I'm sort of getting used to that uh, that shock. So today, I'm really excited to talk to Ed uh, Baptista, and interestingly, he's somebody I've done a number of shows with over the years, and really love the very graphic nature of his work, so I'm really looking forward to learning more about it especially because there's very little documented about him. So I, I usually do a little bit of research before I have these interviews, uh, just so I can kind of have a sense of maybe what questions I want to ask. Um, there's not a lot about him. So I'm looking forward to uh, hearing all about what he's doing. And I'm going to just get on. And I'm going to try not to shiver too much. All right, I think I saw he's coming on board, so. Just have to wait a little bit, I think. Hmm. Unless I screwed up, which is entirely possible. Oh, it says he's been invited, so. Anyway, uh, we'll just wait for, uh, for Ed to join. Maybe he's having some Wi-Fi issues or something. I know we are up here as well. Uh, and I wanted to thank everybody who came out to our North Toronto show this past weekend. Uh, I figured we probably had about 450 people um, through, the, uh, through the studio tour, which was just uh, at the end of our driveway. So that was, um, that was really amazing to see everyone. We had, again, great weather. Saturday rained a little bit, but, you know, honestly, we've had such beautiful weather, I can't really complain. And also wanted to thank my neighbor who gave up her driveway because, uh, you know, our driveways, I'm in North Toronto, so our driveways are pretty small. Um, okay, I'm just going to see uh, what's going on with Ed. I'll invite him again. So it looks like we might have some issues. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Sorry. <laughs> hey, no problem. It happens it's, all the time. <laughs> it's No, you, you know what? It's like you send a request, enable mic, and then it screws you up. <laughs> right? You're oh. like, go all the way back. You're trying to figure out, how do I get back in? <laughs> oh, I know. It happens all the time. And even though I do the tech notes, yeah. I, the other day, I, I read the tech notes. I realized, oh, I didn't actually put that. You have to be following me, otherwise, you can't see the <laughs> the live thing, right? So it's like, yeah. So that's kind of funny. And then iCloud starts doing the uh, survey when when you're trying to get in. It's like not now, not now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one of the reasons I turn off my uh, my ringer and I turn off my Wi-Fi because yeah. I find for me at the cottage too, it spins between my Wi-Fi and my data, so it creates these blips, and it's like bad enough. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, it's great to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me, by the way. Right? So. Yeah. No, I look forward to it. It's interesting because, you know, usually when we're doing the art shows together, we kind of, you know, you chat about, uh, oh, I hope, don't know if we've lost him or if we've lost me. Oh, <laughs> hey. sorry. Uh, that's okay. There. Yeah, I was going to say, we, we usually chat about the show uh, or whatever. And it was interesting mm -hmm. how... Uh, you're you're an enigma, Ed. There's very little written about you. This, it's the same few words everywhere. <laughs> so I know you're no, from the Philippines. I, uh, I know you came yeah. here at age of ten. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's one of those ancient. I I try not to, yeah, you know, like I started. Um, let's see, you, you know, because I still consider myself an emerging artist, right? Because even though I've been, I've been painting since I was a boy, but you know, I got sidetracked with, with a career and a family. So it's not like five mm -hmm. years ago when my spouse basically kicked me and said, you got to do this. And it's one of those <laughs> things where, uh, you know, if I don't do it now, I'll, I'll just be miserable and regret it. So, uh, so I've kind of yeah. pushed, I've kind of like scaled back on my uh, advertising stuff and uh, gone back to painting again. <laughs> uh, yeah so um sorry. so what 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 was it like uh i'm just gonna try to jump into that so what was it that uh obviously she saw the talent in you and felt you should you should do something yeah. what was it that finally made you kind of decide yeah i need to listen to her and i it's time to make that move 
Well, it's it's one of those things. It's uh, because um, I've been doing advertising and graphics for so long, and it's came to a point where I've been freelancing a lot, and uh, and during my quiet time, I would paint, and I would go. I would actually go uh, do a lot, visit a lot of outdoor shows, and take a look at all the artists. And thinking, mm-hmm. you know what? I could do this. I could do this. And uh, my spouse keeps saying, "Why don't? Why don't you?" But the only, the only thing that's stopping me was um, it's fear and step. terror. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, it's it's actually the last like I'm saving my art for when I have absolutely nothing else left. Right? It was it was like. I'm good at this. I'm saving this for last. Like this is kind of like my dessert kind of thing. I totally get that. And yeah. I still feel the struggle with that. Like I have to do yeah. all the stuff that's important and necessary yeah. first before yeah. I get to treat myself and do the art. Yeah. And it's, and being the oldest, right? Like uh, being Filipino, it's always like that whole oldest child. You have to set an example. You can't travel. You can't do this. You have to get a job. You gotta support the family. You gotta you gotta do all kinds of stuff. So, uh, mm-hmm. so yeah. So it, like responsibility was kind of prevalent to to be. You know what? I gotta do all this stuff before I could think of. I could think for myself. So, uh, needless to say, I'm quite happy jumping in and meeting all the artists and 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 doing the art. So how has, you talked a little bit about that. So in, I don't know much about kind of the Filipino culture. In the Filipino yeah. culture, is it kind of one of those things where it's acceptable to have a career as an artist? Or is it kind of like with a no. lot of cultures where it's like, yeah, I don't. <laughs> no, no, because, because like uh, my, my father, like he was, he, he was trained as an architect in the Philippines. But, and like backstory, he wanted to be an artist, but he couldn't. So, so he took the the closest thing to be an artist was to be an architect and Mm -hmm. kind of kind of like this is what you need to do if you want to be an artist you got to do something that pays like you have a salary and I I got into advertising because it was all graphics and you get to draw a little bit and it's it's Mm -hmm. um it was nice and I could always revert to art but but not but not do it full time yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I did. I just wanted to say I got a Bachelor of Fine Arts, but I also spent many yeah. years in advertising, but doing uh, print production, which was kind of interesting because yeah. then I got to actually learn, use this, the silkscreen techniques and the photography yeah, and all that kind of stuff, which was fun. And but, it's nice because you, you get to meet all kinds of disciplines and process and and you absorb a little bit something a little bit uh a little bit more commercial and and a little bit more acceptable and it, you kind of absorb that into your artwork right and it's mm-hmm. it's a really nice um it's a really nice phase of learning what i think yeah i agree like i think there is something about having your foot in multiple worlds yeah you know like i, I love the advertising marketing world I didn't love the advertising world. Actually. I love the marketing world. <laughs> yeah, I have to yeah. say, uh, I didn't love the agency business, yeah. um, but I liked having my own business. Yeah. And I love the technology business and the financial services and then finger in in the arts world. And they're all such different communities. I think you mm-hmm. can really learn and grow from each of those communities. Yeah. No, that's it, cool. And so, how did you kind of then decide? Yeah, okay, you know what? She's right. I need to actually make art more of a priority because that's so hard to do, right? Well, yeah, um, I, I guess I, I had to do it because um, because I, I, I don't know. It's just um, I, I had all this art that's been like sitting around in my house and nobody's ever seen. Maybe a, a few friends or like one or two friends will 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 buy it. And um, it's it's like doing a super deep dive, or like just looking looking to the cliff, and then okay, I gotta do this, and um, and so I I just started joining a whole a whole lot of like um, artist groups, like the Artist Network, and 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 just seeing what they do, just getting to know people, and and what what I need to learn in order to become an artist and just just um, meeting all kinds of really cool stuff. Like the Artist Network is really interesting because I thought, you know what, 
I'll, I'll, I'll join this, these guys. And uh, I ended up showing up for a couple board meetings for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, uh, and I'm thinking, uh, I don't think I should be in this meeting, but you know, I'll just sit, <laughs> sit around anyway. <laughs> and, and I think that's the first time I met you was one of these meetings, right? Yeah, I think so. And then yeah. I remember, I remember seeing your work at uh, Art Walk in the Square. Yeah, uh, that year that was so hot. Oh my god, yeah, dying. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that at that time, I think you were doing kind of your more your MMA fighters, yeah, wrestlers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I I love I loved like the physicality of like of figures and um yeah and there, there's some there's something really unique about it and uh but for a while like um i shifted a little bit so, uh, so i'm adding more color and and doing a lot more portraits and um right now i'm actually doing a little bit of land well i'm doing a whole series of landscapes because the last couple of years i've been doing a lot of traveling from pei to manitoba and, to, and i've collected all these photos and i thought you know what I, I i gotta i gotta put this in in paintings to see what happens and mm -hmm. i'm quite i'm quite happy the way the progress the way it's going with these right. and so did you end up how did you end up then originally doing portraits because most artists seem to always start off with landscape but then move yeah. to other things <laughs> yeah I'm doing, op I'm doing opposite but no because I've, I've always liked portraits I've always liked the figures and um, you, you know like I think every artist like you know they they started like with comic books and you always want to be oh you know what I could do superheroes and and yeah. that's the first thing you learn to draw <laughs> was like you know the Superman logo the Batman logo and you just learn the form and and it's it's always like so neat seeing comic books and the way mm -hmm. it's drawn especially especially from the Philippines because I've never seen American comic books and um, it was always it's always they're like treasures right and i'm yeah. just trace and copy and um it, it was a, it was a bit neat because um because i was quite i i really enjoyed doing portraits and it was really in high school and as i get older it was a really a nice way to meet people right or like you know when i, when I was dating oh hey i could i could i'm an artist i could do your portrait yeah. so <laughs> so it's a, it's a it was a nice way in uh that way so it, it was you know I hate to admit it yeah yeah i used it for that well oh, that's that's pretty cool though so all these uh, all these lucky women have some uh, original well, ed batistas out there well so sometimes <laughs> but but it was a it was a way into to start a conversation or to meet people right yeah and um and even growing up i was just um i was i was a bit surprised thinking it's like you know what everybody should be able to do this and then and i'm just sometimes oh you don't you know because it's such a to me it was just so easy to do and i think and i thought you know it's it's like it's like sleeping people should be able to know how to draw it's like yeah. math right <laughs> but I still, I still think they can, they, they could still do it. Well, I, I do. Yeah. I, I definitely think that like everything it's practice. And I think yeah. that's one of the things, you know, that we talk about a lot on this show is that people kind of go, Oh, you're so lucky. You're an artist. I'm like, yeah. I'm lucky to have had the opportunities. I'm lucky to have had the yeah. maybe support. And, and I think too, do you have a certain amount of talent that's kind of innate and you obviously come from from your family as well. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it is just the hard work. Yeah, right? yeah it I'm is. Just, I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, it is because that's all I did like growing up was just like with with headphones or in front of the TV was just draw, all right? Homework yeah. and drawing because you weren't really allowed to go out. All you did was, was draw, right? right. And um <sighs> What was that? I remember in high school, like um, my I, seriously, my detention, I wasn't allowed to to bring uh, like my books and paper because they would not let me draw. Because <laughs> they knew it wasn't a detention. <laughs> yeah, because it was a detention. You're supposed to sit there and do homework, and and yeah. I was the only one with no with no with no pen and paper because they yeah. knew oh, all. Funny. I I would just enjoy drawing for like the whole detention. So I yeah. 
do. I guess I was a bit more schizophrenic as a kid because absolutely, certainly I drew a lot, but I also yeah. was an athlete and I also did theater yeah. and I guess I was split in many ways as I still yeah. kind of am. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a good, like that alone time of drawing. It's, that's where you learn everything or like drawing and painting. Like mm -hmm. I enjoy, like even now with a family, I, I can't wait for him to take off and then just be by myself and just so I could, <laughs> so I could paint and draw, right? I don't have to make lunch. I don't have to help with homework. I don't have to do chores. Like, yeah, I just yeah you can it. totally get into that zone, right? Of yeah. doing what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, I think that's right. And it's, it's interesting because I can totally see, and it, I mean, if you sort of were first exposed to U.S. comics at the age of 10, it's kind of that classic time too. Yeah where I'm sure it would have had a huge influence and especially as it started moving into more graphic novels where they yeah. become more graphic. Yeah. And I can 100% see how that leads to the first pieces I saw of yours, which were yeah. graphic, very graphic, very black and white. Um, but, but even if you look at like, you know, <laughs> like ancient Greek, Greek sculptors, it's always about wrestlers. It's always about combat sports. It's always about the, the figure, the human figure. It's always, it's always mm -hmm. that. Uh, intertwine bodies right it's you know so for a while I kind of I was trying to figure out uh, you know like if this was a way to get in and then I realized no they, they've been doing it for a long time they've been painting wrestlers they've been sculpting wrestlers right they're it's yeah. it's a really it's a really way to celebrate the figure Right. It's and are you a wrestler? Like, is uh, that something I, you personally do, or you just admire I, the form? I, I did. I've tried a couple of times, but I wasn't very good at it. My brother was a wrestler, <laughs> but it's not. but it's but it's always something really, really interesting. It's to me, it's better than it's better than the pose figure that you see. Mm -hmm. So, like, I like the activeness, the um, the movement of wrestling. Right. Like, yeah. Um, like, like even, even like uh, I, I, I was doing boxing for a while and I didn't like it as much as wrestling because with wrestling, it's, it's so freaking intimate. Like when they're really <laughs> together. Right. And yeah. um, there's a lot of tension and, and it's a weird closeness or intimacy that's, that's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. And now yeah, I can just, see that. Now talking about it, it's like, yeah, I, I could go back and start doing those again. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, after COVID, I guess, because it's yeah, not so much closest, I know, closest I know. now. <laughs> yeah. I know, but yeah, but wrestling is, is, is great, right? To me, yeah. it's always well, been I, like such a great uh, inspiration. Well, and the figures were certainly were great too. I mean, yeah. I, love the, I love the fact you started to incorporate color and even the way yeah. you incorporate color is fairly untraditional, I would yeah. say, and really dynamic. Yeah. So the the interesting thing, uh, because I, my first artist project, uh, I did I did like a whole wall of wrestling, right? And there's one major big one in the middle, and there was a there was a woman who kept coming back and staring at the giant piece, and um, and she she said, you know what, I'll bring my husband to take a look at this piece, and um, she. Came, she came back the next day with her husband and her husband just shook his head and walked away. And across, yeah. <laughs> across the booth, um, there's a, there's a woman who was a curator, right? And um, she tells me like, if that piece wasn't surrounded by wrestling paintings, it would have been sold because, um, because he, she thinks he got freaked out by all these male figures like hmm. wrestling and like it, it's it there's a you know because he didn't want to be associated with buying art from an artist who might be doing all this uh homoerotic themes right which i thought was interesting yeah. she said you well yeah you could have put you, you, any, you can totally see that yeah yeah like he would have bought that piece if he realizes that was just the one piece of wrestling, not surrounded by or, or done by an artist who does like, like male on male wrestling kind of deal. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Cause I thought where you were going to go is that he felt it was too aggressive yeah. like, to have so many different paintings. 
uh, of wrestling around in, in a fairly small space. The artist project spaces are fairly yeah. small, but yeah. it was actually more the opposite. It was just a bit, it was more, more there was too sensual than too aggressive. Yeah, yeah, he, like he almost questioned, like, no, I'm not gonna get this. I'm not gonna buy this, even though my wife like wanted it, right? <laughs> Maybe that says something more about their marriage than your art. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's like I, I just yeah I just paint this all the time and like for the wrestling it's always it was always nice because it's always like uh, middle aged women and gay men who 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 bought the wrestling stuff. Right. That's fascinating. Yeah. And so, do you still show? Do you, does that comment changed how you hang your work, or do you just kind of just now know the, who your target market is and? No. That, that doesn't change like I'll keep putting it up right and yeah. people will always uh, see something like they want to see and uh, but mm -hmm. I really do enjoy so do I have to keep pressing the phone because it keeps uh, fade fading to black sorry uh I don't know mine never does yeah so mine does <laughs> <laughs> excuse me I don't I don't know if it does or not uh, yeah, yeah but, it would be kind of a drag if you went to sleep in the middle yeah, of the day. Yeah, no, it keeps, it, keeps, it keeps going black. So, see, I keep doing that. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Mine doesn't do that. So, it must yeah. be a setting on your phone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my phone does a whole bunch of other things that I don't want it to do. Yeah. So, um, so let's talk about, um, I guess you, I was just reading that your piece, Gasp, just won um, as a runner up in the, uh, in the next Canada kind yeah, of competition. Yeah. You want to talk a bit about how that happened? That's pretty cool. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. It was um, like, again, you know, I was at, um, it was a piece I did, yeah, last year. And it's um, two people just making out, like, and, um, and it was a lot of color. And um, I, I know someone at the Arts and Letters Club who suggested I enter it at next three because, because I, won a prize at one one of the earlier next shows and it was a portrait and someone should suggest it why, why why don't you enter this and um it was a little different because it was just a lot of bright yellows and reds and mm -hmm. the and the people are ambiguous and and i i thought you know it was it was pandemic i'll i'll just send it out and it, it was it was great because um i ended up selling the piece to to a couple in uh colorado um and uh nice. and it won second prize um at the show uh, so it was a, it was a really nice uh excellent uh christmas present that time <laughs> and uh and it was it was just um it, 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 it was like an evolution of the wrestling stuff because i um I ended up doing a whole series of people just kissing and uh, which is, so it's more, um, more intimate mm -hmm. and, um, and, and it's a lot more colorful. And so um, I was happy that, that it sold. Well, it's interesting you say too, that it was a bit ambiguous because when I looked at it on your Instagram, Mm -hmm. uh, it took me a second to figure out exactly what it was. Yeah. Uh, and it was interesting because, uh, you know, I had to kind of almost like pull back a little bit from it to kind of get the figures. Yeah. I do love, love the colors, I have to say, because oh, I love color. Yeah. <laughs> so it's great. It's, I, 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 I couldn't even, um, I couldn't even get a proper photo of it because like it went to the club, it sold, and then it's like, shoot. But like I wanted a picture of it. Like it's somewhere <laughs> yeah. in Col it's somewhere in Colorado right now. <laughs> yeah, right. I know, and it's so it's hard too because you have, you you know as a business person and as an yeah. artist you have to document the work. You have to have yeah. good good uh, archive of records of where everything is. But sometimes you just move so quickly and things happen, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you're like, oh, I, I want a photo of that, or or yeah. 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 You know what's worse? It's like when you're storing it, you're supposed to document which piece it is, but it's all covered up in 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 saran wrap or or, or bubble wrap. I'm like, I don't know what piece this is. So you just put it <laughs> just put it away. Yeah. yeah. I know. I try to write on my file names. So if it's at a get certain gallery, so on the actual file name, I'll append the end of it and I'll put the gallery or where it's located. Yeah. But yeah. you know, that only works if I'm super on top of it, which I can't mm -hmm. honestly say, I always am. <laughs> yeah. 
And so what's, uh, what's kind of next for you? You're, are you still working through the figures, the romantic figures or uh, no, I'm, landscapes? I'm, I'm doing landscapes, actually. I'm doing the reverse where I'm starting to do, do this um, a series of landscapes because I had, I had uh, Phil at uh, day and night make me 27 panels. So I'm wow. going to try, try to get all my landscapes out of me out of my system and fill this out and again it's <laughs> just um it's all through the travels and um you know i figure yeah you're in canada man you, you gotta do landscapes <laughs> right everybody everybody does this so yeah, yeah i'm i'm excited and hopefully fingers crossed that uh, they turn out and will you show those at the artist project or are you just gonna wait and see i guess uh yeah, I think I might I might have missed the deadline for the arts project. I guess I don't know if I'll have them ready. I yeah, I don't know if they actually it's, it's open yet. I'm not sure yeah. if they've decided. Because yeah, because somebody was saying that the applications are out, but uh, I don't know. Oh, I didn't see that the other day. Last week they were the 2020 2020 applications. Yeah. So that could be wrong. I don't know. Well, that would be know. kind of fun. I'd be look forward to seeing. It. And those are the are those also. Uh, I'm assuming they're bright, bright colors. Yeah. Or are they more realistic all, colors? Or yeah, it's uh, because we're doing um, renovations. My contractor saw saw one of my landscapes, and he said, "Oh, funky colors, <laughs> right?" Because it's <laughs> I guess it's something different. All right. So. Yeah. Yeah. So and well, that's um, always fun. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so is there anything else? I saw you were working on a bike barrier, so that kind of sounded interesting, yeah. doing just different things that you're working yeah, on. Yeah, it was, it was one of those, again, like uh, at the start, it's just meeting all kinds and joining all kinds of people just to learn everything about, our, um, about, about being an artist, what makes you successful. And um, Start Toronto was another organization where I got to meet a whole bunch of artists but it's a it's a different realm because, because they're all mm -hmm. like uh street artists or or they do street art on the side you know and um and they do um they're called aerosol artists instead of spray artists and mm -hmm. and they're and they're awesome because because a lot of them tend to be young and just a little a little bit more edgy and uh and and sometimes you feel like, shoot, like I'm the old guy with these all, all these uh, <laughs> young artists and with, with all their spray cans and their tagging stuff. And, uh, yeah. and, yeah, and you, and you feel like, um, you yeah. know, I feel like, uh, like that old lifeguard on the pool, in the pool. It's like, what's he doing here? Right. So, <laughs> but, um, but again, it's, um, I, I'm always been curious about spray painting and, um, and Street Art Toronto gave me the opportunity to to do a bike barrier and just um, learn uh, doing that. It's it's a lot of fun, but man, it's it's hard on your back and your knees. Yeah. <laughs> I bet. Just, yeah, I was wondering about that. <laughs> Whether or not you have to work right at ground level, or yeah, like ground that. level, <laughs> and 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 there are opportunities to do like you know, like big murals on buildings, but again, you you have to work your way up to to those things, but. Yeah, if you had a chance, yeah, try street art. It's it's a really yeah. cool opportunity and uh, meeting all kinds of like different artists. I, it's and it's a totally different world. Mm -hmm. It guys. sounds like it'd be very kind of I don't know freeing somehow, just because you can't again you can't get super tight and fussy with spray paint. And yeah, know. yeah, no, absolutely, and and it's and you got to do, you got to do it fast right because, because if yeah. you start spraying very slow you just end up dripping everywhere or, or mm, clogging. I like fast yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and where do you, do you uh, where's your studio like is it possible for you to do aerosol art in your studio or no actually my my studio is my home studio and uh, i do all the aerosol in in the backyard which that's why I'm excited about the landscapes because I'm painting it in aerosol and spray, which is something. Oh, cool! Yeah, I'm doing a combo to combo of brush and aerosol. So yeah. Oh, that'd be really interesting to see. Yeah, yeah. I look forward to seeing that. Thanks. Cool. So when should we see that? When are you going to post your first one? 
I don't know. Uh, Are you going to post them all together, all 27? I, I think I'll post them all when they're all done because, yeah, it's got to it's gotta be a big reveal, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing that. Thanks. So what about yourself? What are you doing? Uh, well, I just came off of four shows in three weeks, including yeah. our solo show that Helen and I did, our family garden, mm -hmm. which I was super happy with. Um, I'm the feature art artist at Petrov starting in, I guess, about two weeks. So I got to fill in some gaps for, for that body of work I'm going to give to them. Mm -hmm. And I've been sort of, well, for a while, I keep saying this, I need to actually just do it. I've been sort of in my mind playing with some figurative work. So kind of moving yeah. the other direction. Yeah. Yeah. But See, there you go. it's uh yeah, but I'm having a bit of a challenge with the, I really want to retain, I like the palette knife and I want to continue to work with the palette knife because I like the looseness mm -hmm. of it, but doing figurative is usually more, I don't know, more exact. So I'm just trying to figure out how to make it work so it doesn't look like this ugly lump. <laughs> well, it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> you know? have to be exact, right? No, no. But you know you know what it's like when you're playing with something new. It just it takes yeah. a while to kind of figure yeah. out the feeling of it. And the, so, so I have only just started, really. I mean, really, it's still, it's still mostly in the brain. It's not, usually, it's not, yeah. most, it's not out in the world yet. But, and I, yeah, I think playing it's, with always, that. it's always good for, it, for artists to challenge themselves to, to shift uh, to a different direction. Because it's yeah. everything. Because it's so fresh, right? When you when you do something new, and well, yeah. and I definitely I definitely felt there was a lot of <clears throat> a lot of challenge working with my sister on this collaborative mm -hmm. show. <clears throat> and for a lot of people looking at it, you wouldn't necessarily see that, but just working with someone else who has a very different process and a different kind of um, color palette. Her color palette is much more is much cooler than mine. Yeah. You know, and uh, watching someone else painting and trying to figure out their shapes and kind of trying to modify your shapes to match theirs and yeah. vice versa, so that we yeah. can have these collaborative pairs. It was a lot of hard work. It was a lot of thinking work. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. Whereas usually I'm much more intuitive when I paint. So. Yeah. No intuition. So it's like yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you, you know what? We're, I'm, no. So, but it. Uh, so my brain's kind of tired. So I think I'm just gonna chill and do some just yeah. fun well and i think i'm just gonna do some fun easy painting for a bit i think yeah that's good yeah wow. so who knows what's coming up next okay so um i always like to end my interviews with uh if money time influence everything was no option what would your big hairy ass goal be uh <laughs> big hair <laughs> you know, I, I wasn't expecting that one uh, <laughs> well good <laughs> I don't money time influence. Uh, wow, just um, you know, I paint the Hoover Dam. I don't know, just one of, <laughs> one of those things, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I haven't really thought of thought of that one. All right, but yeah. well, yeah. you can think about it for the next interview. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's just, uh, I, I feel like I should do a reel of everybody's hairy ass goals because some of them are quite small and immediate and some of them are yeah. huge. You know, it's kind of, uh, it's just sort of interesting. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Well, that's why nice. don't you let share where they, people can find you, your Instagram, your website? Uh, again, I'm terrible at promoting uh, stuff. <laughs> I, 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 I <laughs> Like even Instagram, I hate posting because I always feel like, you know, photos, it's not reflective what it looks like in real life. And I'm always hesitant. But yeah, um, yeah. my Instagram said uh, uh, Ed Baptista works. And uh, what else? And my. And your website, Ed website, Baptista Works. Yeah, think, works right? dot com. Yeah. So I haven't really updated those things. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, no, I think that sounds good. I'm lo really looking forward to seeing your landscapes. So I Thank encourage you. everyone to follow you on Instagram and yes. watch the progress for the big reveal. I'm sure you'll send some close ups or tidbits or sneak peeks Shh. along the way. All right. <laughs> okay. Th Thank you for uh, having me. And it's been, well, it's been good. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, your, your time and talking to you. And I really love, uh, I love your work and I love to see the progression. It's kind of really cool. To see Thank that you so much. Thank you. <laughs> right. Well, have a great day. I hope you have the rest of the day to yourself to be in the studio. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Thanks. Bye bye. 
Okay, so that's uh, that was great, and I'll uh, put all of Ed's information into the uh, into the notes so you can kind of find him. And uh, just for people who are following me on YouTube, um, I've been at the cottage, so my Wi-Fi is sort of slow, so I was really far behind on all of my YouTube updates. But I was in the city for a few days, so everything should be updated now to up into last week's interview with Roz. So I encourage you to go there and check those out um, and leave me a comment or subscribe if you feel like doing that. And the same issue is true with my podcast. So I am working on it, but it's just uh, the Wi-Fi here is slow. So it's taking me a long time. So anyway, um, thank you so much for everybody's support. And thanks for everyone who came out uh, to all the recent shows. And it was fabulous to see everyone. If there is an artist or an art consultant or a gallery that you'd like me to talk to or interview, please let me know. Uh, coming up next, we've got uh, Todd Monk. And uh, so he's going to chat to, with us about his he does a lot of uh, portraits of women swimming nude in the in the uh, pool is probably what he's best known for. I particularly love these hand portraits he's done recently that are really sensitive and uh, lovely colors. I love those. Um, and you'll have to see who's coming up next because I can't remember. But anyway, have a great day. We will see you uh, next Thursday at 11 o'clock. Okay.